Well, welcome everybody to another one of our Estudar Direito Pelo Mundo uh, meetings with a law school. Uh, at this encounter, we have the opportunity to be meeting with Annie Stone from Arizona State University in the Central Day O'Connor College of Law. Very excited to uh, listen a little bit about the, the LOM and the online LOM that ASU offer. And um, I'll, I'll probably not take too much time uh, introducing myself or the project, I'll just go ahead and, and jump right into it. So um, please make sure that you send your questions through the chat so that whenever uh, Annie has some time in the presentation, she can answer them. And uh, of course, in the end, we'll, we'll have all of our contact information up as well, so you can uh, stay in touch. So thanks again, Annie, for uh, being willing to share with us a little bit about what uh, what it is like to study at, at ASU and also answer some of our questions. And I'll go ahead and give you the floor. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you all for joining us. Um, as he mentioned, my name is Annie Stone. I work here at the College of Law. Um, later on, I would love for, to, to hear what you would have um, you know, questions about, why you're here, why you're joining us, how we can help you perhaps hopefully in the future. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here's my information. Um, again, uh, being here at the law school, I oversee our non-JD program. So pretty much all graduate programs. Um, um, in addition to the LLM, I also oversee our master's program. So we have a master's of legal studies. We have a master's of HR and employment law. We also have a master's of sports law and business here at the law school. Um, so just again, a little bit about myself and my role here at the law school. Now we're gonna go into why ASU Law? You know, there's several other wonderful law schools out there, but I also wanna talk about our programs and hopefully, uh, you know, any programs that may interest you. Um, in addition to provide an overview of not only our LLM that's here on campus, but in the fall of next semester, so fall 2022, we are launching our brand new LLM online program that maybe um, some international students may also be interested in to be able to work in your home country, but also take classes here with ASU. Um, and then lastly, just opening it up to questions to you all um, and hopefully get to know you a little better. All right, so as I mentioned, ASU Law has many degree programs. Um, the first one, of course, being the Juris Doctorate, the next one are Masters of Law, which I will go into a little bit more detail. And then the other legal master's programs that I was talking to you about earlier are Masters of Legal Studies or Masters of Human Resources in Employment Law, as well as um, our Masters of Sports Law and Business. All right, so why ASU Law? Um, we are highly ranked, as you can tell, we have wonderful top ranked programs. We are number four in legal writing, number 13 in dispute resolution, um, as well as health law. Um, if you're interested in environmental law, we're also highly ranked criminal law and of course, international law. Um, as listed, we are number one in Arizona. There are our, um, one, there is one other law school here in the state of Arizona. There used to be uh, two other law schools um, here in the state of Arizona, but they recently kind of fell off in the last couple of years. We are a top 12 public law school. Um, so that's nice to hear because um, a lot of times you hear Ivy League schools, um, but being a public, highly public ranked school um, says a lot about our program, about our staff, students, et cetera, our faculty. Um, in addition, we are top 8% worldwide. So that speaks volumes, of course, uh, you know, universities across the whole, not only the nation, but also internationally. So we are so proud of that. Um, and then, of course, number 30 in the U.S. Now, why come to Phoenix? Um, I was just talking to Klaus earlier. We have wonderful weather from maybe October through the beginning of May. It's beautiful. Um, you know, most days I would say in our winter, it's um, maybe what roughly 60 to 70 um, degree Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that translates to Celsius, but it's beautiful out. Um, unfortunately, this time of year, the summertime, it is very, very hot. Um, today, I believe the high is 111 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so certainly something to think about, especially during the fall and spring semester. We are centrally located in downtown Phoenix, close to a lot of great access to courts, 
to great law firms and other uh, legal organizations. Um, you can certainly take classes here, but we also have um, campuses outside of the state of Arizona. Um, another campus we are closely, um, it's not close to Arizona, but you know, close to for ASU students is our DC campus. We have a wonderful building located just down the street from the Capitol. Um, it's centrally located a block from the World Bank and just down the street from the White House. Um, you can take classes there. Our, our primary classes at um, the DC campus revolve around international rule of law. So this is an area you're interested in. We have great in-person courses um, taught by wonderful, wonderful faculty there. Um, again, you can um, access the building as a student um, being a part of the ASU law program. Now, in addition to our DC campus, we also have two other great uh, facilities in the California state. Um, so in Los Angeles or LA, and then just nearby in Santa Monica, we have great um, relationships established. Now, we currently don't have classes here. However, we soon will. And um, in addition to that, a lot of our students actually plan to, to uh, seek great externship opportunities um, in LA. Um, so if this is something you're interested in, again, we have great other campus um, options, um, another space to kind of study and also possibly work from, depending on if you're wanting to earn an externship in this area. Now that you've learned kind of a little bit more of our campuses, I want to kind of dive into our LLM program, just kind of the bones, the structure. Um, if our students are maybe more focused full-time, it, it, it can be completed in one uh, year or two semesters, fall and spring or spring and fall, depending on how um, you apply. It is a 24 minimum credit hour program. Um, so if you're already practicing in your home country, um, you know, you've already earned your equivalent um, Juris Doctor degree from your home country. The nice thing is, um, if you would like to come to Phoenix, you can earn your LLM um, in one year and then, of course, go back to your home country. Um, you may certainly expand that even further if you wanted to gain externship opportunities, maybe work over the summer. Um, there's plenty of options. It's a flexible program to allow you to still be able to cater to your situation, but also um, take classes as well. Um, for our students that are more interested in the online aspect, again, it starts actually this upcoming fall. We have several courses. Um, actually, I'll list um, our emphasis areas that you can certainly look into. But the nice thing is our online program is much more flexible. Um, we offer fall, spring, as well as summer programming, full-time or part-time, as well as in-person, again, we're online. Now for admissions, if you already completed maybe a USJD program, of course, you would be considered uh, to able to apply. In addition, if you completed your law degree from a foreign institution, you may certainly also apply. The main thing is if you would like to practice in the United States and take the bar exam, you must attend classes in person. Unfortunately, the ABA still requires this rule for the LLM students. Um, so that's certainly something, um, hopefully in the future that we can come back to, but as of right now, only students in person may sit to take the bar exam. Um, the jurisdictions are currently limited right now, I believe. Um, I've mainly been working with students um, looking to take and apply for the bar in New York and California, but there's also Georgia, Washington, um, and also I believe Wisconsin as well, if you guys were interested. Um, so let's go ahead and continue. All right, so the program requirements, again, I mentioned it was 24 credit hours to graduate. Now, there are some required coursework if you are um, a student that did not take um, your JD program here in the United States. Um, SDO 501 US Law and Legal Analysis is one required class, it's three credits. And then uh, another course is Professional Legal Writing, SDO 598. Um, and the nice thing is it gives you a great understanding of structure, legal writing um, here in the States, just to give you a better and more clear understanding. And also um, even some um, research ex uh, experience as well within legal research. Um, again, if you did earn your Juris Doctorate degree here in the United States, you don't have to worry about taking these courses. It's only if you earn your law degree from a different country. Um, now, any of the remaining courses, honestly, can be catered to what you're interested in. So um, in the next slide, I'm going to go over other focus areas that we have. 
All right, so we have two concentrations, meaning these are formal LLM degrees that have specific courses that you have to take in order to earn your degree in either biotechnology and genomics or LLM in tribal policy, law, and government. Um, now, our biotechnology and um, genomics program is housed in our Center of Law and Science and Innovation. Um, from um, just talking to our staff and our faculty, um, you know, they are very proud of their program. It's actually the oldest um, in, um, you know, law schools in, in, in terms of centers um, being able to focus on this area. Um, so they are very proud and also just very excited in doing the work and the research in this area. Now, our LLM in tribal policy, law, and government is within our Indian legal program. Um, they, they are a top if, um, program is especially focused in a tribal government. So this is also an area of interest. Um, this is a specific concentration for our students that must also take certain classes in order to earn their concentration. Um, unfortunately, these two areas are not available online. They are only available in person, um, but certainly something um, to discuss if you guys have any questions about it later on. Now, we also have even more areas of study to talk about. Um, so I listed both our ground focus areas as well as our online focus areas. As you can tell, I just put a little asterisk next to biotech as well as a tribal because those are more programs that are uh, more um, formal that require additional coursework. Um, but if you're interested in just formalizing your LLM within business law or criminal law or health law, um, you know, these are all areas um, that we can certainly help you with. Um, something else I wanted to bring up actually here, and I do have a full slide dedicated to this. If for whatever reason you wanted to maybe not truly practice, um, you know, by taking the bar exam or perhaps, um, you know, studying whether it's the New York or California or another state's bar exam. And here in Arizona, we have something called the Arizona Limited Legal Practitioner Program, where you can sit and take a test. It's not as extensive as the bar exam, but you can take a test. And also it includes ethical questions similar to um, what's equivalent to what's called the MAS, uh, I'm sorry, um, the MPRE, um, which is an ethics exam that also students who take the bar must also take in order to be considered um, as a licensed attorney. Um, let me see if I have that on the next slide to give you guys more information. Oh, here we go. So here in the state of Arizona, let's say you don't want to practice um, in a traditional manner by taking the bar exam, taking the MPRE. Here in Arizona, if you're wanting to stay, we have something called the Arizona Legal Paraprofessional uh, Program, where you can take the courses. You may sit for a, um, not sit for, I'm sorry. You may also earn hours toward um, experiential learning to allow you to sit for this exam. Uh, we provide all the coursework. Um, there's limited practice areas that include family law, civil law, so landlord tenant issues, the jurisdiction issues, criminal law that um, where the cases do not involve jail time, um, and administrative law, um, that's still something that the courts are trying to figure out which areas, which courts, which administrative courts are interested, but there is already a test in play. Um, but it, the services may include drafting, signing, any type of um, filing of legal documents, um, providing advice, opinions, recommendations, um, remedies, defenses, et cetera, uh, you know, within the limited practice area. So um, there's more information on this link if you're interested. Um, I'm happy to share the slide deck if you're, you know, wanting more information or just wanting to keep this for future references for whatever reason. Um, but on the next slide, I will also list the classes as part of what the classes that we have that also go toward the requirements of this legal paraprofessional and business area. All right, so the curriculum. So there are required emphasis courses um, as, and then also kind of the um, more specific core classes that are depending on which, in, in, um, depending on which area you're interested in. So professional responsibility, legal writing and research, as well as evidence are all required if our, if, um, our students are interested in taking one of these areas. However, there's three tracks available. It's family and civil, which are two separate, but they require the same classes. Criminal, as well as administrative law. 
Um, so on, in addition to the three listed above, um, the um, depending on which track, it could be that you have to take all six classes for family and civil, or it would just be the three and the one for criminal law, or the three and the one, again, also for administrative law. So something to think about if for whatever reason you wanted to remain in Arizona, but not truly practice and sit for the bar exam, um, you know, depending on your options. So that's certainly something a lot of our international students have who have already completed their LLM, who were interested in coming back and taking more classes to allow them to be eligible to sit for this exam. Now the application process. Um, all of our students, actually, it, there's two ways to apply uh, for domestic students, but really only one way to apply for international students. Everything has to go through the law school admissions um, council application because they have to um, they have to gather your transcripts and also sometimes also um, it has to go through like a um, transcription uh, service as well. Of course, letters of recommendation, your personal statement, a writing sample, your resume. Um, so all of this would have to go through LSAC initially. Now there's no application fee. We actually waived the application fee to ASU Law. Um, something else I wanted to mention, there is also an English fluency requirement. Um, on the next slide, I'll, I'll also go into more of the specific requirements for the test um, because there's various, now, uh, various options now for testing, um, but certainly something to think about if you are interested in the application process. Um, now for the proof of English, uh, English proficiency, uh, TOEFL, um, the score would need to be at or near 600 if, it, if you took the paper test, or 90 if you took the internet test. Um, and then for the IELTS, closer to seven, or if you took the PTE score, closer to 64. Um, and then the Duolingo, that's something that was, oops, sorry. There we go. Um, for the Duolingo, it was closer to 115. Um, which is a online only exam that was allowed for, um, during COVID. So we're still accepting that. So that's something you're, you've taken before or maybe something you're striving for. Certainly just something to think about as you go through that process. Um, but that's really it in terms of the LLM program. Feel free to put your questions in the chat or even um, unmute yourself and um, let us know where you are. Oh, I see there's some questions here. So let me pull up the last slide with my contact information. Feel free to email um, me with any questions you know, outside of this, if for whatever reason you didn't want to ask in person. Let's see here. So what classes must be taken in order for LLM for the bar exam? So it depends on your state. Um, typically, there is your professional requirement of, I'm sorry, professional responsibility requirement. There's a legal research class requirement and legal writing and research class. There's typically up to either six or nine credits of bar um, bar tested subjects. So it really depends. Um, I would say in terms of out of the 24 credits that's required, typically it's either 18 or 21 credits that will take up your LLM to sit, to sit for the bar exam. And then it'll leave maybe room for one or two electives for you to take. Um, but it really depends on the state you're interested in um, sitting for. It's, it's by state, it's not by the, uh, by the law school. A great question. Anyone else? Feel free to unmute yourself as well. Thank you so much, Annie, for, for being willing to uh, share that with us. That's very interesting. Um, I, was, I was curious. I don't know that's uh, something you didn't bring up uh, directly, but uh, are there any other possibilities of programs? Do you, do you guys have like an LOM MBA program as well and some other possibilities? Absolutely. We actually have um, any of our programs here at the university can be concurrent programs. We don't have a formal um, LLM MBA be just because it's so few that um, the university just doesn't see the reason to put resources toward marketing it, but it's possible. So for example, we've had students share up to six credits with um, their LLM program and perhaps their PhD program or MBA program. So if that is something you're interested in, um, we can certainly talk that through and we would have to talk to your other program advisor to see which classes are allowed to be shared. Uh, meaning, uh, so for example, let's say hypothetically, you know, of the 24 credits, you're sharing six credits. So really you're only completing um, 
18 with the law school because the law school would take six from, let's say, for example, the W.B. Carey School of Business, or um, we also have uh, the Watts College of Social Justice. Um, so certainly something to think about as well. If you're wanting to take dual degrees here at the law, uh, at, here at Arizona State University. Well, while people are uh, waiting to send their questions, I thought I, I'd ask the question that always comes up. Absolutely. Uh, do you guys all, uh, also have some form of uh, scholarship or uh, what are your recommendations for funding when it comes to international students? Absolutely, great question. Um, so our school, it's, um, I would say because we are a newer LLM program, our funding is not as prevalent, let's say, as our JD programs are. Um, however, I would say we do have a scholarship process. We try to award more students rather than bigger amounts. So um, depending on the student and what they're requesting for and for how long, you know, that's certainly something we take into consideration. You know, let's say a student, um, you know, maybe let's say 10 students are asking for uh, a scholarship. So we try to give all 10 students scholarships. Um, so it may not be a high amount, but it, at least it'll be a smaller amount. So all students can also be able to benefit from a scholarship. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, and also a question that uh, that also comes up quite quite frequently. Uh, do your uh, LOM students have classes with the JD students or do they actually have different classes? I understand that the required ones uh, are probably just for, for international ones, but how about the other classes? Great question. So all of our classes are actually still mingled with students. So if you're here on campus, I would say most of our classes you will be taking with JV students. That's, I would say, 80% of our student population here on campus. The rest of our, I'd say 20% is our Master's of Legal Studies, our Master's of HR and Employment Law, and our Master's of Sports Law and Business, as well as our LLM students. Um, so because we just have so many online, I'm sorry, so many in-person courses to choose from, it, uh, you know, it may be that you, there's one or two LLM students in a course, and maybe there's none. Um, now with our online classes, um, I would say majority are, of our online courses are more mixed with our Masters of Legal Studies, or maybe Masters of HR and Employment Law class. Um, so the nice thing is there's, there's a mix of students, you know, no matter what area. Um, keep in mind our mass, or I'm sorry, our international students, regardless if they're LLM or not, also have to take SDO 501 US Law and Legal Analysis, uh, as well as a professional legal writing course. Again, just to make sure everyone's on the same page in terms of legal writing, legal research, legal analysis, you know, just to, to ensure that you're uh, studying properly and also being able to read cases um, in the same manner for all your classes. Yeah, that's incredible. I think that's a very enriching thing when you when you have the possibility of have uh, the just the chance to network and to be together in class. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Uh, here on campus, I try to have student lunches um, at least two to three times a semester. So there's another great opportunity for our students to network. Um, the nice thing is it's not just our school. Um, you know, we have other colleges nearby. We have the Thunderbird School of Global Management that's right next to us. So we often have other international students here on the law school campus that we mingle with and have um, lunches with as well. So uh, I feel like our international student population is still able to feel welcomed and, you know, feel a part of a family and not just, you know, kind of, all, you know, one-offs. Of course, it's different because everyone's coming from uh, somewhere else, but I also feel like that's a commonality and still a way to bond and network. Um, and you never know, you know, being in the international space, you never know if uh, a multinational company is interested in looking for some you know, other individual in a different country. So you just never know. Yeah, that's that's really fantastic. And if I may tell people who are watching this, um, I, I guess I mentioned that to you that I, I had the chance to be in Arizona earlier this year. And uh, ASU Laws has just so many different events and conferences that are hosted at the law school. And those are fantastic opportunities. Uh, they always have great breakfasts or coffee breaks as well. So that's always fantastic about their events. They, they always make sure to have great catering. And 
just the quality of the events are, are just surreal. Uh, lots, of, lots of national, uh, nationally renowned people are visiting the law school often. So it's, it's really a, a fantastic school. And not only that, um, a resource that we don't have here in Brazil, but it's very common in the US, is that they also have a, a career center as well with professionals that can help you. Um, in the case of the LOM, the LOM program, I guess you can uh, uh, look for an OPT right after your, uh, you can apply for an OPT and then work for a little bit. Uh, after Absolutely. your program, right? Thank you so much for bringing that up. So oftentimes I focus on the academic side and forget to bring in the career services side, but absolutely all of our students, if you're a current student or even an alumni, have access to our career services. Um, our career services can help you find placements for while you're in a, in a program for, um, you know, externships or internships while you're in school or even once you've graduated. Um, so certainly something to think about to help you earn those experiential learning hours, um, you know, to kind of get a sense of what the, how things are run here in the States versus back home, you know, again, um, just another way, another resource, another way to ensure that our students are taken care of and also earning that practical experience. Fantastic. Do we have anybody else who's watching it here and would like to send a question? Please feel free to send it in the chat or unmute yourself and we'll be happy to, uh, and Annie will be happy to answer it. <laughs> Absolutely. Even if you don't want to come to ASU Law, if you're ever in the Valley of the Sun is what we call it, or Phoenix, um, please come by the school for a tour or reach out to me, email me. I would love to meet you um, and see, you know, again, how, how you're doing, how um, we're able to help you as a law school. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out if you're ever near Phoenix. Thank you so much once again, Annie, for uh, being willing to give us this presentation and answer the questions. Absolutely. And, um, once again, also, thank you for, for recording the presentation. We'll make sure to publish in our YouTube channel so that more people can have access to it. Absolutely. And um, I think that that should be it for today. But thanks again. It was just fantastic to hear from you today. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Have a lovely day. Take care. All right, now the real questions. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, yeah. So if you'd like to end the recording, we can um, close that up. And yeah, that was just so good. <laughs>